Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know, however, is that this is the start of a new series. In fact, it's the start of four new series that I am doing on my channel. This one, as you will have seen from the title, the thumbnail, and if you've read any of it, the description, is based around the colours of the zodiac. And of course, we all know the zodiac. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. So, I'm going to start at the beginning of the calendar year with Capricorn. So if you want to find out just exactly what Capricorn's colours are and a little bit more about the star sign, then my friends, you are in precisely the right place. As I have said since the inception of my channel, grab a drink, Grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Again, it's pre seven o'clock. Um, I've been awake since half four, so I thought, why not film? I would have told you in the intro that this is the start of a new series or a start of four new series that are linked on 4F Beauty. And today I am doing Colours of the Zodiac. And I'm starting with, well it's not the first sign of the Zodiac, because the first sign of the Zodiac is um, Aries. But I'm starting at the beginning of the year, so I'm starting with the zodiac sign that takes up two-thirds of January, which is of course Capricorn. So, these are the colours of Capricorn, so you can see you've got um, black fading down through the greys to a white, you've got purples fading down through the colour spectrum down to a sort of like a... Um, indigo, bluey purple, then you've got like a, a burgundy brown fading down through the browns to a beige, a green, um, a greyish teal, a teal and a white. So, it's been a while since I cracked this palette out. It's going to be discontinued soon, which is really annoying because it is my favourite of all of this palettes so far. It is of course Alien because we've got black, grey, white, purple, burgundy brown, fading down to a dirty brown, dirt as in, dirty as in the colour of dirt. Uh, this is a very nice green here, there's another nice green there. So I figured this would be a good palette to reproduce the colours of Capricorn. Now, this is still a teaching channel. So as always, I'll be going at a slower speed so that people can keep up with me. And uh, I will also be explaining each step in depth so that complete beginners can not only keep up but can learn a thing or two. It's something that nobody else has been doing. Oh, I notice there are a few that are starting to uh, 
nibble at the edges of my pie, shall we say. Karma will deal with you, my dear. I'm going to insert now the clip um, where I discuss the differences between hooded eyes and deep set eyes. Again, this is something nobody was ever talking about until I started talking about it. Deep set eyes have similar issues in terms of um, challenges when it comes to putting eyeshadow on, as hooded uh, as hooded lids do. But the workaround for the two different type of eyes are very, very different. So, bit of a warning, when the clip goes in, I'm going to be very up close and personal. And uh, once that clip is over and done with, I'll be back to stick some of these onto these. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again it tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow 
So just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey! Right, I am back. So, I think I'm going to start with a little bit of X-Files, which is the, the dirt colour. I'm using one of the brushes from the AliExpress set that I recommend. They call this one the Eye Crease Brush 8. Basically, it's a soft blending brush without too large a head on it. As an example, this is my one of my larger blending brushes. And this is one of my smaller ones. So you can see this kind of falls smack bang in the middle of the two. Okay? As I said before, in the... Um, in the little clip that I just did, if you have less space, just choose a slightly smaller brush. Right, as always, I hold the brush right at the end to um, put as little pressure on the eye as possible. And now I'm going to start blending. I'm going to start off up here. Very, very light blending. I'd much rather put a little bit of colour on and have to dip back in mm. and grab more than put a huge warmth of colour on and then have to blend it out. So you can see I'm going in this direction towards the nose, a bit of a bounce in the middle and then I'm reversing the direction to come back out. Now obviously you will have seen the colours of Capricorn are very muted and very deep. Um, which is kind of appropriate, I guess, for the time of year. I'm going to talk more in um, the latter half of this film. I'm going to talk more about the traits, etc. of Capricorn. But for the minute, I really want to concentrate on actually applying these shadows and getting a cohesive look. Again, bounce in the middle and then reverse the direction coming back out. The reason I do this is I'm 45, I'll be 46 in May. I've lost 14 stone, which is around about 200 pounds, and the skin on my eyelids moves. Um, but I know, you know, teenagers and 20 year olds that have always been slim, that have less taut eyelids, shall we say. So it can be a genetic thing, it's not just because you're the, the right side of 40, um, <laughs> or that you've lost a lot of weight, that can give you this issue. Um, I do struggle more with this eye. This is the eye that I'm blind in. Um, and this, because this eye got pulled around a lot when I was a kid, um, the skin on this eye is much looser. So I, I get more fallout with this eye. I also have to deal with this part here a bit differently because you can see these super deep creases that I've got here. That was caused by my eye being pulled around when I was like, you know, five, six years old. Uh, so yeah, don't pull your eye around, folks. Because I didn't really start to see a difference in the elasticity of my eye until I hit about 41, 42, and then I was like, hang on, why is this eye performing differently to that one? What's going on? As you can see, as I said, I much prefer to gently build the colour up because Jeffrey's shadows are 
very pigmented. So I'm barely even tapping into the pan to pick up the colour. And of course, you know, your eyes are not symmetrical. So I always keep sort of stopping, relaxing my brows and just checking that I've got the same kind of shape both sides. Because unlike a certain spoiled little brat who stamps his feet and YouTube jump up and down and do whatever he says, I don't photoshop my results. Everything that I do, you can achieve. It just takes practice and patience. The only thing I ever do to my photos is I'll occasionally lighten them if it's extremely overcast and the actual colours are not showing up properly. But I don't do any skin smoothing, I don't do any blurring, none of that nonsense. I do occasionally imbibe in a Snapchat filter, don't we all? Uh, but I always make sure that if I do put photos up that I've got Snapchats on, at least the very first photo, or two or three photos, will show the look as it is. Okay, I like that. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush on a microfiber cloth. I don't like using uh, colour switches anymore. I find they're far too harsh on your brushes, especially your natural hair brushes. This is not a natural hairbrush, however, still don't want it um, getting wrecked. Okie dokie. Now, which colour shall I go in with next? I think... I think I might go in with Ghost OG. Which is a a slightly deeper brown with a bit more grey to it. I'm just going to concentrate this on that outer edge there for the minute. Just have a bit of depth in this corner here. I do struggle here and here with uh, dry skin which can sometimes affect how the pigment blends out. But so far, so good. So, how's your day been? Has it been a good one so far? Or are you watching me over your breakfast in the morning? Well, if it's not been a good day, I hope tomorrow is better. And if you're at the start of your day, I hope it's a good one. Are you a Capricorn? Are you into astrology? I mean, uh, I don't read my horoscope and assume that it's written just for me, given all the thousands and hundreds and millions of people that are the same star sign as me. But I do believe that some of the traits... Um, I've got quite a few friends that are the same star sign as me. And we are all stubborn as hell. When we all get together, I tell you, trying to get a decision made, if you've got to try and change one of our minds, oh, good luck. Good luck. Thankfully, most of us are on the same sort of ballpark when it comes to things like that, so it's not quite so bad. Right, to clean the brush off. And I'm going to go in with tall grey. And you could, of course, if you're doing this yourself and you're pulling in the colours from the uh, colour swatch that I showed you, you could, of course, just choose one of the lighter shades, like the teal, and use that to wash over most of your lid kind of thing and then stick a, a white or a cream colour 
onto the mobile lid and you can have quite a soft look for work or for school. But if you're going to go, if you've got the option of a dramatic colour palette, why not use it? So you can see this grey is blending beautifully with those browns, giving us a really nice sort of gradient here. Which is lovely. I do love this palette. I'm absolutely gutted that he's getting rid of it. But um, I did notice on his Snapchat he's doing the photo shoot for the palette, I believe, that's coming out end of April. And it was in a cemetery. And he has said he's going to do a more gothic -y palette this year. So maybe the reason he's retiring Alien is because he's going to do a more gothic -y palette. Well, I am gutted because I'm hoping that doesn't mean that the new gothic -y palette is going to be using half of the shades from Alien and then just half of them new kind of thing. That will really frustrate me because obviously I've got all of his palettes so so far there are very very similar shades but there are no actual repeats okay just clean this brush off and then I'm going to pick up one of my this is a Morphe M321 it's kind of a it's almost like a pencil brush but it has the blendability of a normal crease brush I don't know what the heck they call this but that's the kind of shape I'm looking at and I'm going to go into area 51 which is the purple And I'm just going to add just the hint of purple just on this outer corner here if you can have a corner on an eye you know what I mean just gently build that up a little bit taking it about halfway across so we're not losing that lovely grey and then just bringing it down onto the outer corner of the eyelid like so pretty very pretty and as we all know I love me a good purple and purples are one of the most difficult colours to create it's weird, on my viewfinder this bit here looks really patchy, but in my mirror it's perfectly blended. That is bizarre. But then I, I get that sometimes, and then when I'm editing it I'm thinking, what are you talking about woman, it's perfectly blended on screen. And then sometimes it does still look patchy, but so long as it's blended IRL, then I don't mind if it looks funny on camera because I don't live my life on camera okay can you see what I mean about how I get more fall out this side really frustrating it's one of the reasons I've started doing my base after my eyes because I always used to do it before the brush off. I'm going to use the same brush actually and I'm going to dip into Probe. By far my favourite shade in this palette. Absolutely blooming love it. And I'm going to use my Revolution Super Fruit Spray now that I have 
pigmented to the brush. Look at that. Look at that. Pigmented to the brush to wet the brush. I'm going to dry this ferrule off. The easiest way to do that is put it into the crease of your fingers and spin. It also gets any additional makeup off of the ferrule to stop it from falling on your face. And it stops moisture getting down here and loosening the glue on your bristles. Right. Go into the inner corner here. The inner sanctum, as it were. And I'm going to pull this out quite a long way across the lid. But not quite touching the purple. And just dry that brush off a little bit. If you do get a fallout in your eye like that, try and deal with it straight away. Otherwise, it can make your eyes stream, which just ruins your makeup look, darling. Ruins it, I tell you. Now, as I was saying, with my other eye, I do have to deal with it a little bit differently. Now, I always say to you, don't pull your eye out. But, if I don't pull my eye out this side... I end up with the issue that um, the pigment packs loosely into the creases and then as it dries up through the day it all sort of starts to fall down. You can see the tiger striping here. I'm not majorly worried by that because I knew I was going to be going over a lot of it with this. But you can see this is blending onto the lid. If I didn't actually stretch my lid out a little bit here, it would just pile up in those deep creases. And then as it dries through the day, cascade down my face, into my eye, make my eye run, ruin my eye look, give me multicoloured freckles. I mean, multicoloured freckles can look quite pretty, but if it's not the look you're going for, if you do have to pull your lid out like I do there, uh, my tip is don't pull it out any further than you have to, so don't pull it out to your ear roll. And as soon as you've got it blended over the area you require, let go, as I think you saw that I did there. Right, I'm going to go into Space Cowboy, which makes you want to sing this Steve Miller Joker. Some people call me the Space Cowboy. Mm -hmm. Some call me the gangster alert. Who remembers that? If you remember it, what's the next line? Some people call me... Comment. If you know what some people call him. Right, I'm just going to pop this. Just blend the sort of petrol bluey grey of probe into the beautiful purple of area 51. So again, dry the brush off back into the pigment because you should never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You'll kill it, literally. You might be able to rescue it a few times but you will end up with such bad hard pan on it that you won't be able to... It'll, it'll sink down through the layers and corrupt the entire shadow. Then the only thing that you can do is completely sort of trash the shadow and try repressing it, but then it will get hard pan pretty much every single time you use it because you've already affected the pigment. So, same thing this side, using that gorgeous reddish brown 
to link two shadows. I'm really loving this look. Some people might say it's a little bit much for a wet Friday in March. But those people, we don't need in our life. We don't need that negativity, darlings. We just don't. Right, I am going to pause you. I'm going to bung some base products on, as it were. While I'm fighting to get my pencil brush back where it needs to be. Uh, I'm going to put some base products on and I'll be back to finish this eye look with you. Now, I'm going to have to wait until I press record for the next time I talk to you. You, my darlings, will see me instantly. Hello. I am back. As you can see, I decided to use that lovely little purple that I snuck into the uh, outer crease there on my brows. I basically uh, soap browned them, fluffed them up a little bit and then just used one of these to colour it in basically. It was that easy. Um, the reason I did that instead of using my purple pomade, because obviously I do have a pomade this colour, is that I know a lot of people are saying they're finding it difficult to get hold of coloured pomade. So I thought I'd show you how you can do it just with your normal eyeshadow. And then your brow colours are now unlimited. So, I'm going to grab this flat topped brush. And I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go into the purple again. Just to link up to it. And bring this along. My lower lash line. Now I've always had super, super watery eyes. Um, my eyes react quite badly to bright lights. So. They do struggle with my LED strip lights that you can see reflected in my eye as we speak. Um, you know, even on dull overcast days I have to wear sunglasses when I'm driving. Or a tinted lens when I'm driving. Um, you know, I struggle when, there's, when it's been raining and the ground's wet and then the sun comes out. And, you get the glare back up off the road or glare off of snow when we eventually get it. Which thankfully is not that often. And I say thankfully because most lunatics don't know how to drive safely on it. So, this is the way that I give my lower line, my lower lash line, some impact. Because obviously, if I try and put anything on the waterline, it just my eyes stream. I have done it a couple of times um, where I've used gel liners or I've used Jeffree Star liquid lipsticks um, and they lasted a little while but they soon start you know my eyes soon started streaming and it just it just ruins your makeup you know it's just so frustrating so to blend this lower lash line out I'm going to go into a gravity which is like a beige or the lightest of the brown dirt colours I'm just going to gently use that to buff and spread that lower lash line out this brush is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette I love it because it's flat topped but it's chunky so it's perfect for getting up under your lashes um, I think it's either Wet n Wild or BH Cosmetics do BH, this is a cigarette brand, doesn't it? Um, do what they call a smudge brush, which is very similar in shape. It's just slightly more rounded off on the corners if you're looking for a brush this kind of shape. And you can see, even though I've not put anything on my actual waterline, that does give my lower lash line just a little bit more impact um, than it would have had. And then using my little brush, 
This is a lip brush that I got off of eBay probably a decade or more ago now. I'm gonna that's a coincidence, I'm gonna dip into Pluto. <laughs> Which of course, bless him, isn't a planet anymore. Oh. Oh, I can still consider Pluto a planet. So I'm just gonna run that on the inner corner down to the lower lash line. You can just do the inner corner but with my eye shape I find it works nicely and just finishes the look off if I bring it down and just blend it in with the lower lash line there. And then we'll pop a little bit of it just up under the tail of the brow. Like so. Okay. I am going to pause you for one last time, my darlings. And uh, I'm going to bung some mascara on, decide on a highlight for the rest of my face, put a lipstick on, do something with my hair, and I'll be right back. Again, darlings, for you, it's going to be instant. I am back. I thought a dramatic eye look deserved a bit of a different, dramatic, almost 1980s hair sweep. What do we think? Right. So. This is my... Colours of the Zodiac for Capricorn. And this is my little book with all of my new series secrets in. So let's just start off with a little bit of information about Capricorn. Capricorn are for people who are born between the dates of December 22nd or some say 23rd through to January the 19th. Colours, as we've discussed already, grey, black, white, deep to mid purple, wine, tan, taupe, beige, emerald green, sage and mint. I of course went for the more dramatic of those colours. The traits of a Capricorn are discipline, restraint, and hard-working ethic. Now, I have more information on Capricorns in here, along with all the other star signs. So, to find out what other new series I have planned. For more information on Capricorn and if you're not a Capricorn for your star sign you're just gonna have to stay tuned. Now for info I used my Revolution Blowout mascara. I used my Lethal Cosmetics highlight in a scatter because I think the the icy white to purple ties in with the purple accents and the lipstick is the NYX suede bullet lipstick in munchies which again pulls in the taupe element of the look. As a quick reminder here's the colour scheme for Capricorn if you are a Capricorn, I would love to see you create a look based on these colours. When you do, be sure to tag me so that I can have a look and see exactly how you have interpreted your astrological colours. Right. If you're one of my 4F babies, Please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing people. 
a bit like George Martin did on Game of Thrones. <laughs> you turn around and there's another one gone. Once you've done that, do please leave me a comment in the description. Partly if you can finish that lyric that I was singing at you. But also let me know how you think I've done. Which colours you would have chosen if you had that colour spectrum to play with and let me know what your star sign is I'd be really interested to know if you are new to my channel hi, hello, welcome I hope you've enjoyed it here if you've made it this far through I'm guessing there must be something that you enjoyed it'd be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family we are by far the nicest family on YouTube it's very easy to do. You hit the subscribe button, you turn it from red to grey. You say yes however many times YouTube asks you to say yes after you've rung the bell to get notifications through. And hopefully you'll get told about one every four of my films I put up. Speaking of which, I have an awful lot of other films that you can have a peruse through while you're waiting for the next one in this series or while you're waiting for your star sign. Feel free to pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and indulge. Right my darlings, all that remains for me to say as ever is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.